Hello everyone, there it is, my new Gemini 2 Bluetooth cabinet. Above it you see I have an 11 rack. I've been playing the 11 rack since uh, 2010 and playing it mainly through this Cyber Twin amp. Above this you see a second 11 rack. Um, I enjoy playing stereo. So I use two 11 racks and um, going through two amps. Uh, as you can see, I have some foot pedals here. I was so pleased with the sound of this um, cabinet, the nuances and the rounded shapes and the blending of uh, the sound of each rig from the 11 rack just really thrilled me so much that I actually ordered a second Gemini cabinet, Gemini 2 cabinet. And so I will be playing dual 11 racks through dual Gemini 2 cabinets um, any day now my, new cab my second new cabinet will arrive. I'd just like to say I'm not a salesman for mission engineering. I'm just sharing this um, for the joy of it and also to be helpful to someone. The main issue today being the initial popping sound that one hears at the startup of this cabinet. Now, as you know, musicians don't generally like a popping sound in speakers and amplifiers at either startup or uh, uh, shutdown. So I tried numerous things uh, such as plugging into surge protectors directly into the wall, uh, plugging into power distributors, and yet the pop prevailed. Though, it was, though it's not an offensive pop at all, I just wanted to make 100% sure I wasn't doing anything wrong. And so I communicated with um, Mission Engineering, and I'm just so delighted to say that Paul Shedden, the president of the company, communicated so courteously with me and so helpfully uh, that I just want to share some of that information with you. So the issue here is, as I said, the initial pop at startup. So now let me demonstrate this. Let's get the uh, surge protector on. We've got the power going. As you can see, I've got my uh, Ground Control Pro. Um, by the way, I'm really enjoying these nice pedals, high quality and so forth. Really good. Yeah, yeah, I'm selling you, huh? <laughs> okay, so now let's get this uh, 11 rack on. And while this is powering up, um, I don't need to get into all of the, uh, the functions behind this cabinet. Uh, there are other videos that do that. I just mainly want to focus uh, on the purpose of today. And uh, before I turn this on, I want you to know that I have the level button set to zero on this amp. So, there's no gain or, or volume power in the amp at all. I would like to say when you do turn this amp up, even a quarter of the way, it, this is a powerful amp uh, cabinet. It's just really powerful. So now let me get back here uh, to the switch. I've got my finger on it. And I want you to now listen for the pop as I turn the switch on. Okay, and you can also hear the drivers being activated. So, just a few things um, the president, Paul Shedden, uh, shared with me from Mission Engineering. Uh, first, I'd like to say these components in this uh, Gemini 2 cabinet are of high quality and uh, also I'd like to say that it's made in the US of A. That's right. Yes sir. Made in the United States of America. Um, so 
uh, for me, I had no problem paying the price that I did for it. As a matter of fact, I'm so pleased with the sound. As I've mentioned, I have a second one on its way uh, to arrive any day for my stereo enjoyment as I play my guitar. Um, the company made a decision not to go through all the extra effort and drive up the price of the product any further. Um, so the decision was to just put up with the pop that is quite normal in, in many amps actually in the music industry. So um, that should bring some comfort to us. And some people might have the thought, well, why not a standby switch? Well, from the way I understand the circuitry explained to me, a standby switch might not even solve the problem. Uh, first of all, if you have this unit, you might not want to fool around trying to put in your own standby switch. You'll just validate your warranty. That's one thing. But uh, let me read something to you uh, Paul shared with me. Uh, he says this, Depending on the function of the standby circuit, it may not solve the problem. The pop is from the actual driver cones snapping into correct shape when the power is sent to them. So for the standby to actually work, it would have to send enough power to the drivers to maintain the shape even when turned off, which would probably draw a fair bit of electricity. So that explains it to me. Um, most guitar amps pop anyway, and um, it's kind of accepted. Now, these cabinets have 12-inch uh, woofer drivers, and there's the tweeter in there, which is in parallel. That is, it's built in front of the woofer. So that's to achieve the FRFR, FR, which is full range flat response for those of you in the music industry. So this actually exaggerates the initial pop by adding to it. I hope this uh, video was helpful to you. Thank you so much.